I'd like to now discuss isotropic materials. These are materials where all orthogonal transformations are symmetry elements for the material that you're considering. Uh, common examples of isotropic materials are polycrystalline materials when you look at them at a scale larger than uh, a handful of grains. Uh, and a Amorphous materials are also considered to be isotropic usually, depending on, how, of course, how and how they've been manufactured, but they often are uh, isotropic. And like with monoclinic and orthotropic and cubic materials, I'd look to, like to look at the implications uh, that a material having isotropic symmetry will have with respect to the linear elastic constants. So let's just recall, first of all, that the, when you have a symmetry transformation, then the components of the elastic stiffness moduli in, with respect to one basis, a star basis, is going to be equal to the components in the unstarred basis, where the relationship between the star basis the unstarred basis is through the components of a symmetry transformation. And so every material has a symmetry transformation. And if you use those symmetry transformations in this relationship between an, a basis with, let's say, EI or EJ, and if I have, if I use this relationship to generate a second basis, a star basis, then I necessarily have to have this interrelationship between the components. Now, I can rewrite uh, this relationship EI star equal to qij ej noting that qij are the components in the unstarred basis i can write this as ej star is equal to q transpose ej that's just going to be a convenience here and i'm going to go ahead and, and plug that back up into this relationship here okay and i'm going to do it for a very particular case for q so uh, now before doing that let me just note that the max number of elastic constants that we can have for an isotropic material is going to be three because cubic materials have only three elastic constants and isotropic materials have all the symmetry transformations available so in particular they have all the symmetry transformations that cubic materials have so at most there are going to be three constants and to be super concrete let me go ahead and look at a symmetry element that is a rotation an arbitrary rotation about the three axis so cosine sine minus sine cosine with a one in the 3-3 three, three location there. So that, that represents an arbitrary rotation about the three axis of an angle theta. And because isotropic materials have all orthogonal transformations as elements of their symmetry class, I can use this transformation in this relationship here, and I can plug it into here to uh, come up with a restriction on the elastic constants. So, if I just, let's go ahead and look at the 1122 two component to C. So that means I'm going to set I and J equal to 1, and I'm going to set K and L equal to 2. And if I do that and plug in there, I'm going to have, I can, I can in, in the, for E1 star out of, out of this relationship here, well, let's do it out of this guy here. So E1 star is going to be, cosine theta E1 minus sine theta E2. Oh, that didn't come out very well. Let's just do that again. Sine theta E2. And so if I plug that in for E1 star, that's going to be sitting right there, it's going to split into two terms. So I'll have a cosine theta E1 and a minus sine theta E1 there. And all the other terms, I just leave alone. So E1 star, E2 star, E2 star, E2 star, E2 star. And this equality here is this one up here. And these components here are components in the unstar basis. And I can continue unwrapping the right-hand side of this uh, relationship here by doing the same thing again. So for the second E1 here, I can plug in again this expansion here. Now I'm going to get four terms. And then I can plug in for E2 star and E2 star and then E2 star and E2 star. So I can keep unraveling uh, 
this expression, I'm going to get a whole bunch of terms which I can then collect back together. If I go through that exercise, what I'm going to find out is that lambda, so lambda is the off-diagonal terms in the upper right block, so that would be C1122. I'll find out that lambda is equal to lambda times cosine to the fourth theta plus sine fourth theta plus two alpha, where alpha is the diagonal elements in the upper right-hand block, so C1111, for example. Two alpha sine squared theta cosine squared theta minus four mu cosine squared theta sine squared theta. So mu again being the diagonal elements of the lower right-hand block. So for example, C1212. So I'll find this interrelationship here between the constants. And it depends, of course, on theta, this angle of rotation that I'm looking at. But I can uh, look up a few trigonometric identities to uh, reduce this out. So 1 minus cos fourth minus sine fourth is 1 fourth 1 minus cosine fourth theta. So it's kind of like a double angle formula. Uh, and then cosine squared sine squared is 1 eighth 1 minus cosine fourth theta. So these are just some trigonometric identities. But I can plug those into this relationship that I've gotten here by doing this horrible expansion here. It's a long exercise, maybe one that you should try, but uh, maybe not. Uh, notwithstanding, uh, let me go ahead and plug these trigonometric identities into here. And if I do that, what I'm going to find out is that alpha is equal to 2 mu plus alpha, independent of theta. So I have this interrelationship now between the three cubic constants, which means that there really are only two independent constants when I apply this symmetry element here. So if I write the elastic moduli in this 6 by 6 void form, I end up with 2 mu plus lambda on the diagonal in the upper left-hand block. The off-diagonal elements are still going to be lambda, and the diagonal elements in the lower right-hand block are still mu. But notwithstanding, there are now only two elastic constants to define the isotropic material. And you can keep applying more and more symmetry elements because it includes all orthogonal transformations. Uh, you will find no additional interrelations. And, and, and there are ways of proving that, but I, I won't go through those here. Uh, the two parameters, lambda and mu, they are usually called the Lemay parameters. And mu has a name. It's also known as the shear modulus. For the material. If you want, you can also convert this into a, a form that's independent of coordinate frame. So as I've written it here, I've assumed a coordinate frame. Uh, you can write this in a form independent of coordinate frame. It'll be the fourth order tensor C is equal to 2 mu, the fourth order symmetric identity, plus lambda times uh, the identity, the the rank uh, two identity outer product with the rank two identity. So that's another way of writing it down without using uh, components directly. But the, the main point here is that isotropic materials have only two elastic constants. And that greatly simplifies uh, the experimental requirement for uh, quantifying or uh, determining what the elastic properties are for isotropic, isotropic materials because it says really you only have to make two measurements to be able to find out what the elastic properties are.